Dorothy Must Die Stories, Volume 3, Book 2, Dark Side of the Rainbow, Chapter 1. Holly was bored and lonely, again. She looked out through the rain Rainbow Citadel's clear crystal walls at the brilliant multicolored light of Rainbow Falls. She saw so countless floating islands ranging in the size as small as her pet unicorn, Heathcliff, to two or three times the size of the entire Rainbow Citadel. Dozens of her guests sunned themselves in the island's rainbow-hued sand beaches, sipping jewel-colored cocktails and snacking on sunlit, sunlit puffs and prism pastries. Rainbow Falls Sprite staff, each wearing his or her own version of the informal Rainbow Falls uniform, wispy, inferior scarves wrapped like saris or fluttering around them loosely on the warm tropical breeze, revealing a considerable amount of tan tone flesh carried piled high platters of sunfruit and cloud bread. Half of them had sat down, sat themselves down to nibble on their wares or take heavy pulls on flasks of glowing light liquor. Polly yawned and looked away. Rainbow Falls was the most popular tourist destination in Oz. The guests slept in hovering hammocks sheltered by huge trees with broad emerald leaves that deflected even the worst of the rainbow moons, monsoons. The balmy tropical air never changed temperature. Sun fruit grew on the trees and cloud bread floated through the air in clusters that were easy to break apart any time you needed a snack. The pools of rainbow light lapped against the warm sand beaches. Everybody was happy in Rainbow Falls, because Rainbow Falls was paradise. But being happy all the time, Polly reflected, wasn't quite the same thing as having companionship. Or much to do, because even though Polly was officially in charge of Rainbow Falls, everything just kind of ran itself. Don't you think it's strange to see so little of your subjects? Ozma asked. What? Polly turned around to face her cousin. She lit a rainbow husk cigarette, exhaling a long plume of multicolored lavender scented smoke that Ozma waved away irritably. They're good for you, Polly said, whirling her eyes. They make you a lazy space cadet, Paul, Ozma said. I'm not lazy, Polly said. She and Ozma were cousins, the way that all fairies were cousins. She loved Ozma, of course, but sometimes she could have sworn that Ozma brought out the absolute worst in her. In addition to being the Queen of Oz, she was a total square. Ozma was just as serious about her responsibilities all the time, which made her kind of a drag. We're friends, Ozma. We're supposed to be laughing and dancing and free. We're supposed to rule like the tides rule the sea. So maybe Polly was a little spacey, but that had nothing to do with the rainbow husk smoke. She was just a free spirit. She'd inherited the role of ruling Rainbow Falls, but following the rules wasn't really her thing. Neither was staying in one place. I don't understand why you don't come with me to the Munchkin Country for a d Dazzleberry cor Cordial Festival, Polly said, changing the subject. It'll be fun. I'm going to go dance ga dancing every night. Last year I met this super cute farmer, and we spent the whole weekend, like I said, you can't pull... I can't believe you just take off all the time, Ozma said severely. You're supposed to be ruling a kingdom, Paul. Everything we are is about taking care of this place, like a garden, not an ocean. I see my subjects nearly every day. I ask them about their concerns. I think about new laws that will help better their lives. I worry about the health of Oz, but you just... Ozma waved a hand dismissively. My subjects are fine, Ozma, Polly said, blowing another plume of smoke at a crystal window. Look at them. Do they seem unhappy to you? They don't notice whether I'm here or not. Ozma shook her head and then smiled. I don't want to fight about it, she said. Let's just spend some time together and enjoy ourselves until I have to go back to the Emerald City. Polly smiled in relief. Your wish is my command, she said. Want to hit the beaches again? Sure, Ozma said. That sounds great. Maybe I can even get a tan. But as Polly gathered up her beach gear, translucent calf caftan basket of snacks and a blanket woven from a cloud silk, she tried not to let Ozma see her face. She knew that would actually hap that would actually happen as soon as they settled down on some isolated, flawless beach. Ozma would get an important message from the capital and dash off, leaving Polly to bask alone in the tropical rainbow fall sun. It happened every time Ozma came to visit which wasn't very often, and Polly was happy she'd even gotten Ozma up here this late, this time, and Polly was tired of it. Tired of Ozma's nagging, tired of looking for things in common with her uptight cousin, tired of defending her freedom-loving ways. 
The truth was, her husband didn't know how to have fun. And at the end of the day, she and Polly were nothing alike, no matter how hard Polly tried to enjoy herself with her cousin. She closed her eyes and took several deep breaths, concentrating on the second of dis sound of distant waves. What are you doing? I was meditating, Polly said. Ozma was so literal, it was exhausting. Annoyed despite herself, Polly led Ozma to her absolute favorite beach. Parasol trees floated a few inches over the swirling rainbow-colored sand. A pool of li blue light lapped gently against the shore. Polly threw down her gauzy caftan as Ozma politely averted her eyes. As if Polly cared who saw her naked, she thought, and in a clean, graceful arc, dove into the blue light. She somersaulted lazily and then surfaced again, flicking drips of blue light out of her eyes. "'Come on, it's perfect,' she urged Ozma. But of course, no sooner had Ozma spread her blanket out over the gleaming, pristine sand than a big, gold-winged butterfly popped into, into being overhead. "'An urgent message for Her Majesty Queen Ozma. it squeaked. Ozma jumped to her feet. "'I'm here,' she said. A gold-hinged door at the butterfly's chest swung open, and a scroll of white paper emerged with a clicking noise. Ozma reached forward to take it as letters and a loopy, spiraled cursive appeared on the, image, on the page. Ozma scanned the document quickly. I'm sorry, Paul, I gotta go. The Nixies are in a fight with their neighbors, and he'll probably get messy. Ozma made a face. Water rights, you know? Someone has to set the boundaries in the Silver Sea. She frowned again. It's weird, though. Ever since Dorothy Gale ba came back to Oz, things have been different in a way I can't totally explain. I've spent a lot of time with her, and she's a sweet girl, but I don't think she's been completely honest with me, and she treats her own aunt and uncle as though she can't wait to get rid of them. It's almost like she's... Are you even listening to me? Mm? Polly said. Dorothy. Sounds stressful. She'd known as soon as she saw the butterfly what was coming. She closed her eyes and leaned backward until she floated on her back, bobbing gently. You can't hang out just a little longer? But she already knew what her cousin's answer would be. It is stressful, Paul. It's more than that. It could be something serious. I'm sure she has the good of Oz in mind, but there's something up with her, and I'm going to find out what it is. You know, Paul? She stopped. What? Polly asked, not opening her eyes. She had a feeling she knew it was coming next. Sure enough, Ozma took a deep breath. It was her, I'm about to launch into a monologue about your responsibilities of a ruler, deep breath. Polly sighed and squeezed her eyes shut more tightly and waited. It was nice to see you, Ozma said finally instead. Polly opened one eye. Her cousin's expression was rueful, as if she knew what Polly thought of her constant nagging. It was nice to see you too, Polly said. She meant it. No matter how different she was from her cousin, she still loved Ozma. She just wished Ozma could be a friend. Like a real friend, not just someone you hang out with because you were related to them. Someone who really got her. Who knew how to have fun. Good luck with the pixies or whatever. Nixies. Nixies, right. The water ones. Polly yawned and Ozma laughed. You're impossible, Paul, Ozma said. But there was a real affection in her voice. I know, Polly said. With a pop and a flash of light, Ozma disappeared. If Polly had known that was the last time she'd ever see her cousin, her cousin as she always was anyway, she would have pushed harder for the munchkin holiday. Instead, she flicked a crystal droplet of rainbow with one finger. It chimed like a wine glass. Bring me my unicorn, she said, leaning back and drifting off. As soon as she'd had a little nap, she'd set off for the munchkin country. Maybe she'd send Ozma a postcard if she remembered, which, admittedly, she wasn't so great at. One unicorn coming right up, said an unfamiliar voice. Polly sat up, treading rainbows. You know he's a panther, right? Who are you? Polly asked. You're not one of the Rainbow Falls attendants. If you are, you forgot your uniform, and I'll thank you not to insult my unicorn. Bright, at your service, said the stranger. He was a good-looking in a storybook kind of way. White blonde ringlets, pale gray eyes, pillow pillowy lips that looked like they'd been designed especially for kissing. Very intriguing. Polly flustered her eyelashes at him, and he winked. I was hoping we could figure out some kind of a work trade. Heathcliff was wi winding around Bright's legs purring. Give me back my unicorn and tell me who you are, Polly said, trying to sound severe. She didn't like random strangers showing up at her favorite private beach and wooing her unicorn. 
even if they were incredibly good-looking and extremely fit random strangers. Bright scratched Heathcliff's behind the ears. Heathcliff, Heathcliff, Heathcliff's purr intensified. I think he likes me, Bright said, and I've already told you. My name is Bright. What kind of name is that? Polly asked suspiciously. What kind of name is Polychrome? He countered with a saucy grin. You'd have to ask my parents, I guess. But to do that, you'd have to find them. Polly narrowed her eyes, pretending to be miffled. Heathcliff is extremely dangerous. I'd advise you to, get, to give him back. Bright scratched under Heathcliff's chin. Heathcliff closed his eyes in ecstasy. Yeah, he's terrifying. So, about that work trade. I was hoping I could, you know, help around the, the place, clean the rainbow pools, whatever you want. In exchange for what? A place to sit, stay. Some surf time. Bright gestured in the direction of Indigo Beach, where the waves were legendary. I wanted to come here my whole life, but resort wear isn't really my thing, and to be honest, I'm broke. I don't need a pool boy, Polly said. Baby, everybody needs someone, but I'll start with the pool. His voice sounded serious all of a sudden. Polly didn't do serious. People came to the falls and fell in love with her instantly on a regular basis. It was because she didn't look like anyone else in Oz, and because she was part fairy. The beautiful boy didn't stand a chance, really. The falls have everything I need. Didn't you hear? This is paradise. But then he said something that she had never heard before. Not from any of the sprites. Not from Ozma. I bet it's hard work being in charge of all this happiness. If you ever need, he began, help. I can manage Rainbow Falls in my sleep. I breathe fun. Yes, you do, he said appreciatively. But I was going to say if you ever need company. Sprites, munchkins, gilkins. There was a line around the falls for her attentions. Despite Bright's bravado, there was something genuine about him. He made it sound like she was the one who had need, might need company. But Polly wondered if it was the other way around. I have plenty of company, she was about to say, considering bringing a sprite over to kiss her as proof, but instead she smiled wider and said, I bet you can't manage the waves out there. I can handle myself. He was cocky, but he had a surfer's build, lean and broad-shouldered, every muscle clearly defined. Maybe he didn't know what he was getting into. Maybe he did. Either way, it wasn't Polly's problem. She didn't make rules in her kingdom. Do we have a deal? He was arrogant, that was for sure. He was also flirting with her, and he was really, really cute. And she hadn't had this much fun in a long time. Besides, he seemed sort of lost, sort of sad. She didn't hate the idea of cheering him up. Fine, she said with an exaggerating sigh and rolling, rolling her eyes, and his grin got bigger. Let him think he'd won this round. Polly was an old hand at that game. Suddenly, that trip to Munchkin Country didn't seem so urgent after all. 